Well, welcome to my studio. Today I'm working on a snow painting, which is for a girl that grew up in Florida and has always lived in warm weather. This is always an experience, but it's fun. And I've, over the years, we have, Jack and I have traveled to places that where it snows and actually even been there a few times when it was snowing. We tried to avoid that as much as possible, but we took lots of pictures and studied and discussed how things would be painted and everything. So I'm going to start on this. It's a portrait of a home in Vermont, and this is going to be a gift. And now I'm working on the trees. The sky has been painted in. The lower part of the sky is phthalo blue plus white. The upper part of the sky is cobalt blue plus white. I'm just taking a big brush, clean brush, and just kind of really smoothing out that sky. I want the transition between the lighter and the darker part to be very soft and smooth. So, got that. Now, I begin with mixes of, this is a mixture of mud, which is my two parts of ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson, and lots of white in it. And I just kind of start putting in some grays for my my trees. Joe, the husband of the wife that the, of the couple that is commissioning me to do this painting, he calls this time of the year stick season. He says the trees are just all sticks. Now this is a little bit of mud plus some cadmium orange mixed in. I want these trees, the sun is coming in from the right of the painting, so these trees are going to be warmer back here where the sun is really, really touching them. And I even add a little bit of cadmium yellow medium in here just to give that warmth. I'll come back in and bring some of my sky colors back in here to give some holes <clears throat> in that foliage. around this and by having these darker colors that back behind this building then that gives my we'll really see the snow on the roof. And I'll bring some darker darks back into there too. Work around my roof. I can just let this be pretty loose and, but I do want some darks into that foliage. You can't have the light without the dark. Another mixture, I'm going to make me a mixture of just ultramarine blue plus white plus a little bit more mud in there just to gray it just a touch. As my trees go back, I want them to get cooler, so that's why I'm making this mixture of blues. Because these back in here will be cooler. You know, but we want them to drop back. Cool colors go back, warm colors come forward. So the cool colors are your blues and your purples. Warmer colors are reds, oranges, yellows. So I want these bluer tones back in here, way back here in the distance. Now I just kind of feather these over that wet paint of the sky. By painting wet into wet, I can get some nice soft edges. We're going to have a evergreen tree popping up right there and that'll pop up in front of that blue in the back. Those grays back there. We just want some nice soft grays. I'm going to have a tree here too. Right now I'm just kind of working on these in the back. When we start moving up to this tree, see I can just take a clean brush and pulling from the sky into the trees, I can soften those edges. See how that does? I can just pull from that wet paint into those. And that really softens those edges. Because we want those trees to just feather back. And this time of year, you just get a lot of that feathering back. Now I'm taking some of my phthalo blue plus white and just adding a little bit more in there. <coughs> Now I'm using a coming back in, starting to get a little bit warmer because the sun's hitting the top of these trees. 
It'll be darker down below. So I want that contrast with my my roof. Snow on the roof. I carefully work around my sketch. I did my sketch yesterday and I that was sketched up with an oil wash of mud plus liquid. And this this way then my sketch is dry so I can work around it. And if I happen to go over a little bit like I did right there, I can just take a Cleeton brush, dip it in thinner, and just pull that paint off. Get back to my sketch and preserve my sketch. I like to do my sketch and then let it dry overnight. That way then if I happen to go over, it's real easy to make corrections. And I'm going to bring some of that blue into here. These are just done very loosely. Bring my brush out. You'll notice I do a lot of wiping of my brush and I use a lot of this tissue. And a clean brush gives you clean paint on your canvas. That's the secret to nice, crisp, pretty colors. And now I'll bring, start bringing some of my little grays in here, a little warmer. Now that fireplace is going to be a red brick. Just a little bit more gold in here, yeah. Those twigs and stuff, when they catch the light, they can even turn a golden, just a nice warm. So we want some light hitting back here. See, I can take that big brush and just make some nice little feathery, feathery strokes. Now I'm going to start putting some dark, almost trunks like in there. a little bit of texture. These trees, it's a lot of varied color in there. If you look at, if you examine and, and really study trees in the winter time, there's still a lot of color within all those dead branches and twigs and stuff. Now I'm going to start coming back in and adding some of the sky back in there, taking my sky color and start giving us some breaks in all the foliage. Bring my paint over here. I had put it on the side to save it. A little too far away to grab something. Clean my brush again. Now here's here's a place where I really have to go back and forth, keeping my brush pretty clean. See how I pulled some of that brown into where my sky is going to there. So. These branches come off sideways. Again, I want this to be very soft because I want it to go back. Soft edges go back, harder edges come forward. We want this to feel very soft. We want this all to go back. Here at the top edge, this cobalt blue plus white is going to come in. And you can see I start letting that let sky holes come in. And then 
I feather out some of these edges there? Just from a distance, all those fine little twigs and all just become very, very feathery. Pull this. I'm taking some of my sky color and pulling down into that. Again, you want your brush to be clean when you do that. I want a little brush to do this. I just want those edges to be really soft. Careful, I don't have brush strokes up in there or places you can see. When my brush hits like that, you can see the mark that it leaves, and I don't want that to happen. So I just come back and I can smooth over. That's where I don't have those gouges in the paint. Oil paint is very forgiving. You can scrape off and paint over and Soften all these, all these edges. Now, when I'm painting, I don't worry about answering the phone. If it's important, they'll leave a message. If it's not important, they won't. It's too easy to get interrupted, and all of a sudden, you've lost a half an hour of your painting time. And so, it's, it takes discipline. I don't like to answer emails. During my painting time, I have specific times that I answer emails and answer phone, and then, then it's back to painting. It's a business. In order to make a living doing this, you've got to be disciplined. I'm going to take this little dark spot out here. I also get a lot of sales calls, and I just... So that's a lot of, that's why I let the machine get the phone. If it's, like I say, if it's important, they'll leave a message. If it's somebody trying to sell something, they don't. And as we go back, there's less detail in the trees. I'm going to make them a blue or gray. Just get some soften back here. Some sky holes in there. That's a little too bright, but I can just pull some of that dark paint back over it. Take my clean brush. See how that softens that out? Nice and it's gray up there. Now I'm going to bring a little bit of my warmth right in here. And this tree is and we get some warmth up in here. Get a few little tree limbs in here, just these are a little closer. Now I'm going to take that one out because my evergreen tree comes up here and I don't want that line to continue up. So we'll just make this a little darker in there. And we'll bring a little bit of warmth right in here. there we go. There's our distant trees. I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel and I also have a blog where I show the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting as well as others I do. The link is in the description below. It's also on the final frame of my video 
and I also have my official website, the address for that on the final frame. So I appreciate again you watching and you just have a wonderful, wonderful day.